Hi, my name is Dana Bruns and this is 123 Google. I am an instructional technology specialist and Google certified educator and trainer. I work at Jackson R2 Schools in Jackson, Missouri. The way this presentation is going to be laid out is I'm going to have tips that I consider level 1, level 2, or level 3, and I'll be rotating through those. So level 1 tips are those that I consider essential for anybody that uses Google Workspace. Level 2 tips are those for um, Google Workspace Ninjas, and level 3 tips are those that are more suited for people who consider themselves to be Google Workspace Ninja Masters. So I'll be rotating through the level 1, the level 2, and the level 3 tips. So if you consider yourself more of a level 1 user, just hang in there, because as we rotate through the level 2 and the level 3 tips, we'll be right back to a level 1 tip in no time. So screencasting in Chrome has just been released. I don't have it in my domain yet, but um, Eric Kurtz has made a video that's available. And if you click anywhere in this box, it'll take you straight to that video and you'll be able to see what it looks like. But basically you're gonna be able to screencast and have your screen and your picture like I have here. Um, you're gonna be able to either record your entire screen or just a portion of it. And the really neat thing about it is it's going to record a transcript of your video. So like everything that I would be saying right now would be tra transcribed over here on the side. And then if students needed to go to a specific point in your video, they would be able to click on the words right here and it would jump to that timestamp in your video for them. And it'll also be able to translate the transcript into any language for other language learners. So already available, you can do summaries in Google Docs. So this is going to be fantastic for those of you who are working on um, graduate degrees. You can take text from another article and paste it into Google Docs and Google Docs will provide a summary for you so that you know if that is an article that you do in fact need to read if it's relevant to any research you're doing. I want to make sure that you're aware of this as well because students have this ability too. So I'm a former ELA teacher and we often had students write summaries. That was one of our learning standards. So I just want you to know that students can do this too. So if you're asking them to write a summary and you get summaries that are very similar, this could be part of the reason why. Sometimes I really wish students would use their powers for good instead of evil. Okay, appointment schedule. This replaces appointment slots if you're familiar with that tool that Google used to give us in Google Calendar. Um, it's going to create a booking page. This is available in the free version of Google and I think this is going to be fantastic come um, time for our parent-teacher conferences in the fall. The problem with appointment slots was that um, any user that was signing up for a time slot had to also have a Google account. An appointment schedule, that's not a requirement. But the one thing that has to happen first before you can do this is you have to go into your settings in Google Calendar and you have to enable appointment schedules. So you just have to go in and check this box here. And if you need to know more about how to create these appointment schedules, on this next slide I have a video that will walk you through the entire process. So you can follow that step by step and go ahead and create appointment schedules. It'll create a booking page with a link that you can send out. It'll even work if you have like two days of parent-teacher conferences. You can even um, schedule yourself some time to go get a drink, go to use the restroom, anything like that. So you can set up 10-minute appointment slots with a five-minute buffer in between them. So that's going to be fantastic, I think, for things like parent-teacher conferences. All right, another new development in Google Docs is that we now have pageless documents. Um, I find myself printing a whole lot less now that we have um, Google Docs and we have an LMS. You may be the same way. So a lot of my longer documents, I don't necessarily need to have that margin at the top and at the bottom and on the sides. So what this does is it, it, it eliminates that margin that you used to have. So if you go into Google Docs and go to File and then go to Page Setup and select Pageless, it's going to go ahead and make that one long continuous document and eliminate that margin space that you used to have at the bottom and top of every page. You can also change the default font in Google Slides now. And you do this by going in and um, you have to select a theme first. And then in Slide, you can go to Edit a Theme and you can change the default font that was selected to go along with that theme. 
Um, you can change it from whatever was selected to whatever you may prefer, and that will apply to any of the slides that you have in that presentation. So that's a really nice feature. You don't have to go into each individual slide and continually change that. And they've also now added the ability in Google Docs for you to have watermarks on your document. Um, this is something that we've been missing for quite a while. Those of you that were familiar with watermarks on Microsoft Word documents, you can now just go to Insert, Watermark, and you can bring in, like this is our logo for Jackson. Um, you can have your logo in there. You can have a word like Draft showing up behind there. And you can actually set the transparency of the um, word or image if you want to. You can decide what color it's going to be, how opaque it's going to be, and make those type of adjustments after you've brought in the image or the word. So that's a nice feature that some of us have been missing for quite a while. Other people didn't know we were missing it. Checklists in Google Docs. You can go ahead and insert a list, highlight it, and go to Insert, and then Checklist, and it will add checkboxes there for you. I am a person who likes a list, and I particularly like being able to check things off of the list. The one thing that I don't necessarily care for is that it does strike through the words as you check them off on this list. So that is one thing that I do wish we could see changed, but the ability to check things off the list is a really nice new feature that we've got in Google Docs. Okay, if you don't know about the ability to schedule Gmails to send messages later, that is a fantastic addition to Gmail. If you click this little arrow next to the Send button, you get a pop-up that says you can schedule send. You can pick any day or date and time. Um, it has some defaults there, like tomorrow at 8 o'clock, but you can also pick a specific date and a specific time that you want to send. And then those emails will show up over here in a folder that says scheduled. And this is really nice. Um, I need to send an email when I think about it, but that doesn't mean that somebody else needs to receive it right when I'm thinking about it. You know, a lot of us are night owls and work at different times. That doesn't mean we need to be interrupting other people's sleep if they have their email set to push. Mask images in slides is another cool feature. Um, we all know this is the crop button right here, but if you click on that drop down arrow, it gives you the ability to mask images. So any shape that is in there, you can take a square or rectangular picture and you can change the shape of that picture just by selecting this drop down arrow and selecting a shape, it will mask that image. Hide the film strip view in slides. So this gives you a lot more gray space for your interactive activities. And you'll notice there are two buttons down here. You can't see them in this image here, but there are two buttons down there that will do this, or you can just go to view and you can uncheck the arrow next to hide film strip. So this image over here on the side that shows all of your slides, that's called the film strip. You can go ahead and get rid of that and then if you're doing interactive slides, it gives you a little more real estate on the side there to, um, to have those interactive elements. So that's the film strip that I'm talking about. And when you go and hit that view and remove that check mark, it gets rid of those. Edit your bookmarks in Chrome. This is one of my favorite features. And a lot of times when I'm working with teachers, I will notice that some of them, one, either don't have their bookmarks bar here showing or two, don't realize that they can change or eliminate some of the wording on their bookmarks. So like we all know, this is the symbol for drive. This is the symbol for calendar. This is the symbol for Gmail. If you right click on any of those icons and select edit, you can change what it says here or you can simply eliminate what it says here and click save and you can get rid of any of the wording that is next to any of those icons. You can also move these around just by clicking and dragging them. So I have any icon that I know what it stands for over here on the left, anything that I need it to say something next to it so I can identify what it stands for are here in the middle. And then I have my folders over here on the right and we're gonna get to that one in just a minute and we'll be talking about those folders there as well. But being able to edit your bookmarks gives you a lot more real estate here on your bookmarks bar. 
So closed captioning for slides, if you go to um, present your slides and you select the closed caption option, as long as your microphone is enabled, every word that you say will show up here along the bottom while you're presenting. So any students that would need to be able to read the words as well as hear your words while you're talking will be able to pick that up if you have a microphone enabled as well. Um, this can be really helpful in class. I can't demonstrate it right now because I'm actually using an extension called Sir Links a lot um, to present because this allows me to have access to my bookmarks bar and also to my tabs and still be in full screen for my slides. Um, Google Docs has also added drop down menus. So if you go to insert and add a drop down, you can add drop down menus for your students to select from. So here you can see I've added a drop down menu for them to select which stage of the writing process students are on. And then once you've inserted this into your Google Doc, all they have to do is select. You can even color code these choices. And then when they select, it will color code their answer and that will show up there in their document. So besides being able to bookmark specific websites on your bookmarks bar, you can also create folders of bookmarks. So if you have a group of websites that are all related, like my folder here of Canvas websites, I can bookmark all of those and put them together. You can even have a bookmark that goes straight to your Google Drive. So I have um, related bookmarks here. This is a folder in my Google Drive and I just place that bookmark directly here on my bookmarks folder. So if you have a, spy, a site that you want to bookmark, like say I wanted to bookmark we video here, I would simply go here and click on the bookmark star. And when I said I wanted to bookmark this, instead of saying that I wanted to put it on the bookmarks bar, I could click down on this drop down, and then I could say which one of these folders I wanted to do, or I could choose another folder, or I could create a new folder. And then that's how you're going to go ahead and save something to a specific folder on your bookmarks bar. Template emails are one of my favorite things to use as far as a time saver. So if you have an email that you're sending and you know you've sent a similar email before, you can just go back into your sent emails and you can create what they call a template email. So then you click the three dots over here in the bottom right hand corner and go to send to select templates and then you save your draft as a template and then you can insert a template into your email. The nice thing about this is even though you're using a template email you can still personalize it if you want to like add the person's name or change a date. So anytime you have an email that you know you've sent something very similar to it before go ahead and create that as a template so that you have that to use in the future. Alright, I absolutely love the ability that they have now with these new ships. Um, basically, if you're searching in your drive, and I have so many folders, I can't remember where I have put things anymore. It is so much faster for me to just go to my drive and search for things instead of trying to dig through all the folders and subfolders that I have. So I will go and search for them instead. So now instead, used to you had to go and click on this little icon right here to go to the advanced search. But now you can go and search and if you know it's in your drive and you know what type of file and I usually know what file I'm searching for. If you know it's yours or if it was shared with you by a certain person, if you know how recently you've searched for it, you can go and you can find it pretty quickly by using these search tips. And it'll just, it works the same way as the advanced search. It's just fewer clicks. So I love that feature as well. Okay, another tip that I have for you, and this is just kind of my personal tip, is that probably all of you have different thing, or different profiles. So um, you have your school account, you may have a personal account, we have what we call a curriculum account. So I have different themes for all of these profiles. So you can see my stripes here. This indicates to me that I'm in my school account right away. I have polka dots for my personal account. 
We have our curriculum account and that's just red because that's one of our school colors. So I can tell right away which one of those I'm in because I can see this and I know immediately that the stripes, that's my school account. So that's one thing that I use just to make sure that I don't accidentally open something school related in my personal account. Okay, um, a lot of times if I'm sitting at home on my couch and I'm doing some schoolwork and I wanna watch a video but I don't necessarily want the audio to be playing while somebody else is watching TV, um, I'll just watch the captions. And a lot of them will have their own captions but now there are video captions automatically that you can enable in Chrome so that you can have captioning for any video that you watch. So all you have to do is go to your Chrome settings and go to accessibility to turn these, Chrome, these captions on. And it's really helpful. They're actually pretty good. Um, so you can see these are the video captions themselves that the, um, the video created. These are the Chrome captions that are showing up there. And I know you can't see that in this slide presentation. It's way too tiny. I just wanted you to see what it looks like. And they actually are pretty good. Most of the time they're pretty accurate. And even if a word or two is off from the context, you're able to pick it up and, and tell exactly what it is they're trying to say. So um, you can go to settings and then advanced and accessibility features to turn those on. Um, if it doesn't turn on right there, then you just need to go to your Chrome settings and, and enable that. Keyboard shortcuts. Um, over the course of time, if you use keyboard shortcuts, that can save you, a, according to some people, eight days over the course of a year. So I love using keyboard shortcuts. Um, Jen Giffen does a, a podcast that I love to listen to. And she refers to that as saving nanoseconds as you, you know, say as you use these keyboard shortcuts instead of having to move over and use the mouse and do it that way. Um, so some of my favorites are control C for copy and control V for paste. And I am hyper aware of it as I work with students who don't know those shortcuts or teachers who you realize how much time they're spending as they're moving over and going to the right click button. One other one that I realized that a lot of people don't necessarily know is the tab feature to move from one field to the next on a form as they're filling it out. Um, I know a lot of you probably use Google Classroom. We use Canvas here. And I notice this particularly as people are going to sign in. So when they're on the Canvas page, and they're signing in. So they'll type in their username. And then if you just hit tab, it'll automatically move your cursor down to the next field so that you can type in your password. But instead, they'll go up here and they'll type in their username. And then they have to move their hands over the mouse and click down. Whereas if you just hit tab, it is so much faster because your fingers are right there on the keyboard anyway. And it just moves your, finger, your cursor from that one field down to the next. So. These keyboard shortcuts, this will take you to all of them. So it'll take, show you all of the window shortcuts that you have. Um, I just have some that are my particular favorites. And I think I shared, no, that's in the other presentation. So going back here. Yeah, this picture will link to all of those shortcuts that I was just clicking on over here. So as you go through here, opening a new window, opening a window in incognito mode, all of these, there are so many of them that you will probably never even know them and you won't need all of them. Um, some of them that kind of blow my, my teachers away as I show them to them. Um, one in particular is control shift T, which will reopen a closed window. So that one, I know that they like because as they're going through, um, and walking around and their, their students will quickly close a window and they can do have the students do control shift T and reopen that window so they can see why they suddenly closed a window when the teacher walked by. Um, I use that all the time because I accidentally closed the wrong tab and I need to reopen the one. And you can do control shift T multiple times. So if you um, need to reopen a tab that you closed five tabs ago, you can do control shift T, control shift T, control shift T over and over again, and it will continue to reopen closed tabs. Um, control shift C will copy, control shift V will um, paste. 
Um, I know a lot of people, I'm sorry, control shift or control V and control C. I know a lot of people want to do um, control P for cut for paste, but that is actually print. So I remember it's control V like Velcro. So control C is copy and control V is paste and control X will cut and paste at the same time. So this, those are some of the most common ones, I think. Um, and control F, if you don't know that one, that will open up a window. Let's see. And help you find something on the document. So if I type in here, I know this is real hard to find milk on that page, it'll highlight whatever word you're looking for. So if you're on a web page and you're looking for something and you can't find it, it'll highlight it for you and tell you how many times it shows up on a page. So if you don't know that one, that is a complete lifesaver at different times. All right, record to slides is a newer extension. Um, this makes it really easy for you to include audio on a specific slide. Um, so it's an extension that'll show up up here with all of your other extensions after you add it. And it will allow you to record slides and embed it right into that slide. Um, otherwise, there's no real easy way to, in to incorporate audio into your slides. This one will allow you to embed it right here. Um, it's pretty easy. It doesn't take a whole lot. As soon as you click on it, it will open it up. Oh, and this isn't gonna do it because I'm already in present mode. So let's go over to this one. All right, it gives you this little camera icon right here and it opens up with the player and you just click to record your video. It gives you the little record button and it'll open up the camera so that you can start recording. And then when you're done, it just gives you the YouTube player that you insert right back in there and there's your video. So as you're going on, the only bad thing about this that I don't like is that it's particular to that slide. So if you want audio that's gonna go across slides, you're still gonna have to go back and use like Screencastify. Um, I don't need to play that right now. So Screencastify will go from slide to slide. Record to slides is only gonna be on that particular slide, but it's super easy for students to use. And the other nice thing is um, if you make a mistake, you only have to re record one slide. You don't have to redo the whole thing. So for students, I think that's also a lot easier as well. It's very easy to have a color other than white as the background color for your Google Doc. All you have to do is go to File, then select Page Setup, and then choose whatever color you want for your background color on your Google Doc. This is another feature that I absolutely love, um, linking to a specific spot on a web page. So if you want to send people to a certain spot, um, if you're going to a specific website and it's a long website and you wanna send them halfway down to that page. So let's see. So there are 14 different things on this page and I wanna send you to number five. All I have to do is highlight and then right click and copy that link to highlight. And then when I come over here to the tab to send you there and I paste it, it's gonna actually send you to that exact spot instead of sending you to the top of the page and me having to tell you exactly where to go. So that is a super useful feature. This is a wonderful template that I found that Emma Cotier has, has created. And basically you can use her template. She has created step-by-step -step instructions and you can create your own Google Classroom banner. So if you want to use this template, you click on that button and it will open up and she's already made this. She has formatted it to be the right size for you. And then on slide number two, she has the step-by-step -step instructions so that you can come back up here onto slide number one and make your own Google Classroom banner. So you don't have to use a Bitmoji. It doesn't have to look like this. Whatever you do to make your own banner though, it has to be sized in this same way. So that, Whatever you create, as long as you make the slide the same size in this area where she has it right here, 
it's going to fit into the Google Classroom banner in your classroom. And then you go through and you can go ahead and create it, download it as a JPEG, and then you can upload it into your Google Classroom and have your own customized banner. Okay, tab groups in Chrome. This is another way that you can organize and create your own groups. So if you right click on a tab and then you click to add it to a new group, you can create your groups and color code them. So I can go ahead and add this one. So I've created this group, it's outlined in yellow my other presentation for today, I can drag into this group and any other tabs that I want to select there. So then I can minimize those if I need to. And then I could make a new group over here if I right click on this one and I can make a new group. Um, we'll just make up something here. Give it a new color. And then I can just Again, drag over there. See how that one's outlined in blue? So you could um, maybe have a tab group for anything that you open on a regular daily basis, like your email, maybe your Google Classroom. I have my Canvas in there. I have my calendar in there. Anything that you're going to use on a daily basis, maybe you put in a group that you call um, daily tabs. Um, maybe if you have two different sets of classes, like seventh grade ELA and eighth grade ELA. Maybe you have tab groups for those, or maybe you just need a bunch of different tabs for a class that you're teaching that day. It's nice to be able to group them, and then you can close them and open them as you need to. Okay, so they made a lot of changes to um, Google Meet over the past year. Um, as they found out that teachers were needing these changes as we had to go virtual, they really upped their game and were very responsive to all the needs that we had as we were having to teach virtually last year and even some of us over this year. Um, one of the nicest changes that they made this year is the ability to move participants in a breakout room all back into the group meeting. So right now they give you a countdown timer. So all the participants in the breakout room will know that they have 30 seconds and then they are automatically going to all be moved back into the main meeting. And then it looks like this over here, where it says that everybody's back in there. So that was one of their nicest um, changes that they made this year. Most of their other changes occurred last year, I feel like. Oh, they have finally made these needed changes to Google Forms. So they reorganized and improved the visual display of the menu items. And so now when you go to a Google Form, they have a tab for all of your settings. So this is what the settings actually look like, but now this tab shows up here. I felt like before you were hunting and trying to find all of your different settings because they were all in different places up here in the, underneath these icons. So now they're all nicely arranged here. Um, when you click on these, like presentation, there's a drop down. They're under defaults. When you expand each one of them, they spread out and there's a drop down. Another great change that they made was that as someone starts to fill out a Google form, their progress is going to be automatically saved as a draft for 30 days. So that is super helpful. Um, like some of our parents, as they are enrolling new students, they fill out a Google form and they might not get it finished all in one setting because that's going to be a lot of gathering forms and paperwork that they might need. So that's okay because their progress is gonna be saved and they can come back to it later. So I love both of these improvements. <clears throat> um, this is one that you may not have noticed yet because that is supposed to be rolling out, but they're changing the way your Gmail is going to look. So if your district uses Gmail, um, you may have actually already seen this change in your personal account. It hasn't occurred yet in my school Gmail yet, but they're gonna be changing so that you have your Gmail, Google Meet, Google Chat, and Spaces all in one place. Now, we don't actually have Spaces turned on here in my district, 
But basically, this is all going to be, um, it's going to be the same thing that you have there. It's just going to change the way it looks. So you're going to have an app main menu over here. Um, everything else is going to be a collapsible panel. And I think the way this, the best way to explain this is that you're going to have more room for all of your um, menus over here on the side for your labels and things. So you're going to be able to collapse things and have a better view over here. So I don't think it's really going to change anything. It's just going to look different. And I know that in my district, whenever they, whenever teachers open something up and it looks different, that kind of tends to make people freak out for a minute until they stop and look at it and realize that nothing's really changed. It just looks different. So I am sending out an email to just to let people know that this change is coming so that it doesn't catch them by surprise. So just a heads up that this is coming. Um, it was supposed to begin rolling out on February 11th. So if your domain is a rapid release, you may have already seen it. You may have already seen it in your personal account as well. Um, and then it was supposed to start rolling out on February 28th to regular scheduled release domains. But like I said, that hasn't happened yet in my district. The other thing that I found out that I thought was really weird was that even when it's in scheduled release domains, it doesn't happen to everybody in your district at the same time. Um, this happened one summer when they started adding audio to Google Slides. Um, I didn't have it, but my partner did. And that's how I learned that, you know, even when they roll something out, not everybody in, this, in the district gets it at the same time. So you could have the new look for Gmail and your partner teacher may not have it yet. So just a little tidbit, a little bit of Google trivia. Okay, this has been here for a little while, but unless you're doing Google Sites on a regular basis, you may not realize that this is new and that this is available to you. But you can now create your own theme in Google Sites. So the things that you're able to personalize now are the fonts and the text style. You can change your colors. Um, it's nice because you're now able to bring in your own brand images. So like we can bring in the JSPEAR a little bit more easily than we could before, before you were limited as to where you could put it. Um, navigation settings, you can customize a little bit more and you have a lot more control over the components such as buttons. Another huge bonus is that now you can restore a specific page from version history. Before you could only bring back like the entire site. So if you had made a lot of changes and then you realized you just wanted one page the way it was, it was all or nothing. But now you're able to have more of a, a granular way of restoring changes that you made. When you're searching for something, <clears throat> Even if it's a file or a presentation, you can just open up Google and you can start searching in what they call the Omnibox in the search bar up here. You don't have to go ahead and open up Drive first if you know the name of your presentation. You can just start searching for it here in the Omnibox and it'll pull up. So you can see that here in the GIF. So that's a nice little tip. So Google will search everywhere for it. Now they may actually come up with some other options, some web pages that are named similarly. You can see as I type more and more in, it narrows down the options till I get to the presentation. But just a little tip, it can save you a few more clicks that way. Google Docs has added a lot of new table features as well. They've got improved sorting. You can now pin the header row so just like in Fury and Google Sheets, you can save that header row so that as you're sorting and scrolling, not necessarily as important for a table as it is for a spreadsheet when you have maybe hundreds of rows. It's a lot easier to add and remove rows and columns. And you also have more properties on your sidebar over here. So you've got a lot more control and you can um, customize the way the table features look a little bit easier. Okay, oh, Google's taking that video away. The Chromebook has awesome accessibility tools. Um, again, those are built in for the Chromebook. 
There is a text to speech. There is a recorder. And to get to those, all you have to do is go to the snowman up here in the top right corner of your browser and go to settings. And then in the search bar, type in accessibility. Nope. Oh, sorry, I went to the wrong search bar. Let's try that again, Dana. Go to settings. And in this search bar, type in accessibility. All right, and then you wanna turn on the option that always says to make sure the accessibility features are always on. Now, I don't have that option because I'm not on a Chromebook right now. So you should have that option. It says always show accessibility options on the system menu. So that will be an option that will then put those, let's see, what was that picture? Um, your system tray down in the very bottom of your Chromebook, down the lower right-hand corner, will then have an accessibility feature. And that will show up there and you'll be able to turn on those features like the text-to-speech and the, um, what are the other two that they usually use? Text-to-speech and the dictation tool. All right, Google Sites updates. These are some of the older ones, but one of the ones that they really like, um, the image carousel, the ability to do section layouts that are already pre-built, and the buttons. Those are the three of the more recent additions to Google Sites that have been very popular with students and teachers alike. Some newer features and sheets that are relatively recent are the ability to remove duplicates to trim white space, um, some keyboard shortcuts that now work. And you can also, this is one I love, insert images into cells. So this is especially important if you're trying to do things like t-shirt orders and things like that. So here's the image into cells feature being demonstrated for you. Um, probably everyone is already aware of the ability to name different versions of Google Docs, but this is particularly helpful if you are trying to name a version as like a template or maybe um, update a syllabus like with the year so that you can have um, a date and continue using the same syllabus year after year. Or even if you want to name a draft as a version and be able to see your different um, changes from like first draft to second draft to final draft if your students are working on something. So again, you're gonna do this by going to file, version history, and then name the current version. If any of you do things like electronic breakout boxes, you've probably used response validation in Google Forms. So you're gonna to go to the three dots in the lower left-hand corner and select the rule. And you might do something like make it so that the number or the correct answer has to be um, a specific number or maybe a letter um, after the A, make it so that it doesn't have to be plural or um, it has to be a numeric response or something like that. Or maybe even requiring rhyming words where after a letter makes it optional. The asterisk after a letter makes it optional. So S um, asterisk means that a word doesn't have to be, I'm sorry, um, B asterisk AT or C asterisk AT or M asterisk AT could be used for rhyming words. Okay, one of my absolute favorite um, extensions is this one right here, the Color Pick Eyedropper. So this is an extension that you can use to match colors. So if you are um, a little bit type A, like I am at times, you can use this extension where you click on it and then it will give you these crosshairs. So then whatever color you're trying to match, like if I want this exact red, in the Google 
G. There's the hex code for it that's highlighted right there. So then I can do control copy and I have that color. So then if I wanted to go and change the text here, I could go into, let's see, I could go in here and I could change the text color by going to custom and pasting in that code. And now that same text color from that G, the word instructions is now that exact same color. So if you're trying to match, say something on your website, if you want the text to match the same color in your school logo or something like that, then you can use this color pick eyedropper extension to get your colors to match. Again, it's not always something that I worry about, but on a website or something like that, if I'm doing a flyer or something, then I use that extension when I want it to work. If you have your students working in Google Slides, like on a collaborative slide deck, you might want to use the grid view in Google Slides because once you go to that view, you can see all of your students working at the same time and monitor their progress. So it makes it a lot easier also if you're preparing a presentation, you can see all your slides at the same time and it makes it a whole lot easier to move them around instead of having to just use the sidebar over here and keep moving them that way. If you think that you may have signed into your Gmail account on another computer and forgotten to sign out of it, instead of having to go back to that particular computer, you can just go ahead and go to your Gmail account and then scroll all the way down to the bottom of your inbox. And in the lower right hand corner, there'll be a hyperlink that will say details. If you click on that, it will open up and show you all of your activity on this account and show you where you've been signed in and when. And if you are signed in somewhere else, there will be a button right here that will say sign out of all other activity. So you can see it here in this GIF. Once you get there, it'll say sign out of all other Gmail sessions. So you can click that button and it'll sign you out everywhere else that you may have been signed in. <clears throat> if you didn't realize that you can change this as well, you can change the copy or you can change the URL to make it more functional for yourself. So typically at the end of this slash, it would say either edit or view or copy. So whatever is after the slash, if you highlight that, you can change it to edit, change it from edit to copy, and that will force a copy. So then if you change this and that's what you send to your students, it's gonna force a copy for all of them. They're not gonna be on yours. They're gonna each have their own copy that they can edit. So if you're not using Google Classroom, that's an easy way to make sure that everybody gets their own copy. So especially if you're working with like other teachers and you want them to all have their own copy, that's an easy way to do that. Um, another thing to do if your district allows it is always check that link in an incognito window. So if you go to the three dots and open up an incognito window and paste your link there, make sure that it tells you, asks you if you want to make a copy. Okay, match the formatting when you paste. So if you paste something and the text doesn't match, it's a different font. See how this is larger than what I had there before? If you do, instead of just control V, if you do control shift V, it will automatically paste using the same font size, the same font as what you were typing in before. So that is a very helpful tip. Again, it'll save you some clicks. So instead of having to go then and highlight it and change the font size and change the font, just do control shift V when you're pasting it and then it will match. Huge time saver there. You can fast forward in YouTube videos. Instead of having to try and click along the bar, you can just jump to points in the video by pressing a number. So if you press two, 
it's going to go to 20%. If you press 7, it's going to jump to about 70% through the video. So another easy keyboard shortcut that will help you kind of get to exactly where you want to be in your YouTube video as you're watching it. Text Blaze is one of my absolute favorite Chrome extensions. I kind of have a problem as far as Chrome extensions are concerned. Um, I, 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 have a, I have a definite addiction to Chrome extensions. So this is one of them that I really like because you get to make your own shortcuts. So if I type slash L-E-T, whoops, I need to get my cursor down here, sorry. It changes to, please let me know if there's anything else I can do to help Dana, because that's how I sign a lot of my emails. And that's because I have the keyboard or the Chrome extension, Text Blaze. So you go in here after you've installed this extension and you make your own shortcuts. So one of the things they suggest is that you make sure that you use things that aren't going to show up in a word. So like the double letters D-D-O-N-E. So if I type that, it changes to done. Please let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. Again, happens, I, I type that a lot of emails. So you decide what shortcuts you want. These are still a couple of the demos that they had in there. Um, slash summer. Hope you're enjoying your summer vacation. I must use a lot of these in emails, I think. Um, I think you get 25 of them for free. And then after that, you have to start paying. So that's one of my favorite extensions. I think we'll get to my other one here. Undo send. I'm going to skip to my other one because I want to make sure I get to show you that one. There it is. Clipboard History 2. This is another fabulous extension. So that's linked in there for you, but it will give you access to previously copied text. So if you look at this extension up here, I have access to the last 150 things that I have copied while I've been typing on this computer. It doesn't work across um, devices. So I can only get the things that I have copied on this particular computer. I can't get anything that I copied, for example, on my Chromebook. So two days ago, I copied, hello, my name is labels. If I click right here, I can go in and I can paste that right there. So it's really helpful because otherwise I would only have access to like the last thing that I had copied and pasted. So I can copy this and paste it. And then I can go back here and click out of their advertisement and I can go back to, I don't know, something from two days ago. And I can paste that. So this is super helpful when you're working. Um, I can't tell you how often I use this. So that is another one of my absolute favorite extensions. Now, I know there are some slides in this presentation that I haven't talked about. This is a slide deck that I have been adding to for several years. So basically, those are the ones that I expect that you are already familiar with, and so I didn't necessarily feel the need to talk about them, especially since this presentation is already approaching an hour in length. I have left them in there so that you would have access to the information and to the gifts that are already there, so that you could refer back to them if you do discover something that you want to investigate further. This has been 123 Google, and my name is Dana Bruns. You have my contact information here. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or if there's anything I can do to help you further. Thanks for joining me.